This is a National Museum of Australia production. For more information, visit nma.gov.au. Welcome, everybody, to this evening's opening here at the National Museum of Australia of the exhibition Inside Life in Children's Homes and Institutions. My name is Andrew Sayers, and I'm the director of the National Museum of Australia. And our Auslan interpreter this evening is Deborah Hayes. I'd just like to advise to begin with that there is a hearing aid induction loop in the hall. So if you require hearing assistance, uh, you can use the T-switch on your hearing aid. And also to advise that the, tonight's proceedings are being recorded for museum and Commonwealth government purposes. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet and welcome Shane Mortimer, who will shortly welcome us to his country. On behalf of the museum, it gives me great pleasure to welcome the Honourable Jenny Macklin, Minister for Families, Housing, Community Services and Indigenous Affairs, Mr Jack Thompson, members of the National Forgotten Australians and former Child Migrants Consultative Forum, and representatives of the Alliance of Forgotten Australians. And I'd particularly like to welcome Caroline Carroll and Eris Harrison, representatives from Care Leavers Australia Network, and I'd particularly like to welcome Joanna Penglaze, co-founder of Care Leavers Australia Network. The International Association of Former Child Migrants and Their Families, I'd like to welcome Harold Haig, the Secretary. I'd also like to welcome Mr. Jim Luthie, the President of Care Leavers Australia Network, and Mr. Ian Thwaites, Assistant Director of the Child Migrants Trust, and all members of those organisations. Danny Gilbert, the Chair of the National Museum of Australia, and Anne-Marie Swertlish, Director General of the National Library of Australia, who are our partners with the National Museum in this history project, along with the Australian National Maritime Museum, represented here this evening by Michael Crayford. And most importantly, I would like to welcome all of those present who have spent time in children's homes and institutions. And I know that many of you have travelled a long way to be here this evening. Welcome. When we started this exhibition two years ago, the only object that we had in the museum's collection was a fundraising button. But most of the objects you see in the exhibition have been donated or lent by those who spent time in the homes. You have given us your precious objects, your photographs, and your stories. You have made this exhibition. And I thank you for your generosity and your trust. We welcome you here this evening, and we also remember those who spent time in homes and institutions who are not with us tonight, those who have taken their own lives or whose lives were taken from them too soon, and those who as adults are still incarcerated. You are not forgotten. This exhibition is about giving a voice to those whose voices were for so long silenced or ignored. You won't find the voices of staff or families or other con others concerned, only those who were children in the homes. 
It's their time to be heard and to be believed. And we've been very fortunate that so many of those who were in homes have shared stories with us and on the Inside Exhibition blog, which has been up now for more than 12 months in the lead up to the exhibition. We know that we can't tell all of the stories of the 500,000 children in the probably 800 homes and institutions that existed in the 20th century. What we have here is part of bringing this story into history. We'd like to acknowledge the Minister and her Department of Families, Housing, Community Services and Indigenous Affairs who have funded this exhibition. We'd also like to thank the National Forgotten Australians and Former Child Migrants Consultative Forum, whose guidance and support has been so crucial to the development of this exhibition. There are several organisations also that deserve our thanks, including the Alliance of Forgotten Australians, the Care Leavers of Australia Network, the International Association of Former Child Migrants and Their Families, and the Child Migrant Trust. We thank them all for their generous support. Many people have worked on this exhibition over the past two years, and I'd particularly like to pay tribute to the museum's curatorial team of J. Arthur, Adele Chenouth, <laughs> Carolina Killian, and to Julie Goff and Freeman Ryan Design, who have worked to affect a design which is sensitive, appropriate, and powerful. Thank you. We are committed to telling the truth, so we are aware that the exhibition and this evening's proceedings may arouse difficult feelings. We do have counsellors here this evening. If you spent any of your childhood in out-of-home care and feel that you need the services of a counsellor this evening, then please feel free at any stage to approach one of our visitor services hosts, who's our team members of the museum wearing um, the black and grey shirts on which where our stories live um, are embroidered and they will be able to direct you to a counsellor. I would now like to welcome to the museum Mr Shane Mortimer, Gambry Elder, who will welcome us to country. Shane. Thank you, Andrew. The Honourable Jenny Macklin, Mr Jack Thompson, Mr Danny Gilbert, Andrew Sayers and all of the National Museum of Australia team and volunteers who worked so hard to mount such exceptional exhibitions as this inside exhibition you're about to see. My name in Wogaloo is Mingo, which means grass tree. My people are the Ngambri people, the people for whom Canberra is named. Many Aboriginal people claim this land to be their own. I can only speak for my own people. It is with abiding respect that I acknowledge all of the Aboriginal people of this land, their elders, past and present, and I bid you all welcome to country. Now, special guests and ladies and gentlemen, please raise your hand if you are Indigenous. Fantastic. Now everybody raise your hand because you are all Indigenous to somewhere. And what is Indigenous you are generally very proud of. You're proud of your origins. Exhibitions such as Inside, Life in Children's Homes and Institutions are a clear demonstration that Australians are ready to identify the mistakes of the past, correct them and progress to embrace and be proud of all things Indigenous, not just the people. 
It is with great pleasure that I stand before you today and very proud on behalf of over 400 members of my Aboriginal family. In particular, my mother, in her 80th year, the oldest of all of the Ngambri people. Ngambri in our Wogaloo language means cleavage, the space between a woman's breasts. Good place to work and live, Andrew. <laughs> Inside reminds me of the former Australian Government's Aboriginal Protection Board policy that saw my grandmother and her six siblings taken from their mother at the Brungle Mission, somewhere between Gundagai and Tumut, and sent off to the cold hard charity of St Joseph's and St John's Catholic Orphanages in Goulburn. Yeah. Goulburn residents recall stories of the orphanage children going to school without lunch, without shoes, without warm clothes. In fact, one man told me that he used to pack an extra sandwich every day for one of the boys at St John's because uh, they had no food. It was really very harsh. Leaving Brungle was the last time my grandmother saw her mother. Florence Ellen Lowe died within weeks of her children being taken away, absolutely broken hearted. Their eldest brother ran away and was never seen again. They were denied their family, their language, their culture, their environment. The girls were then dispatched from Goulburn to a Catholic uh, girls' home, for want of a better word, in La Perouse, near Sydney. The treatment was so harsh that the siblings formed a pact never ever to reveal their Aboriginal background. And they took that secret to their graves. As a result, they were assimilated, married Europeans, went separate ways, had their own children and never really spoke to one another again. My mother and her cousins grew up blissfully ignorant of their Aboriginal background and culture. The policy worked. Now put yourself in my shoes, being told that we're an extinct race, get over it. The ACT former Chief Minister stated that native title is extinct in the ACT. The 400 plus blood relatives of the Ngambri people that I represent are scattered throughout the continent. Our culture denied, our country overrun, our ecosystem decimated. Ngambri land today is no longer capable of producing food or water enough to sustain its population. But out of that adversity comes opportunity. And we've discovered that since the 1992 High Court of Australia Mabo decision overturned the, the notion of terra nullius, common law native title rights to the land belong to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Not even the Commonwealth has clear title to the land that the seat of government is on. Sir Gerard Brennan, former Chief Justice of the High Court of Australia, handed down the Mabo decision. He laughed when I told him that the uh, ACT claimed that native title was extinct. The Wolgaloo language is spoken on a daily basis in the Snowy Mountains and can be recorded and taught for future generations. The men and women knowledge holders of our people still reside among us in our Wolgaloo language area. The remnant vegetation of the area still exists and can be a great resource to feed millions around the world. So I say to you, be proud of all things indigenous to you and of the people on whose land you reside. Look ahead 10 generations. 222 years is all it took European infusion to get to this point. Congratulations to the National Museum of Australia team. It's a phenomenal exhibition. And Jenny, a great initiative, thank you very much. Fantastic initiative. Yet a Mora Ngamri Dalla.
Welcome to Ngamri Country. Thank you, Shane. I would now like to introduce one of our greatest actors, one of the great friends and supporters of the National Museum of Australia from way back, and someone who has deep personal connections with the stories told in this exhibition. Would you please make welcome Mr. Jack Thompson. Thank you very much. Thank you for honoring me by asking me to be here for the opening of this exhibition. Thank you, Jenny, for supporting this extraordinarily important exhibition. There are two reasons why I'm here. I was invited far too many years ago to be a part of the establishment of a national museum. And for many years, we fought to have such a museum created. In the end, it is here. The importance of the National Museum is that it is only here in this country that we tell the tale of who we are. There's a line of my father's poetry, I have what I have had, say I. We are all the sum of all those things that go to make us up. And this nation is the sum of all those things. And more recently, we have agreed to face some of the things in our past which we have decided previously we would bury and deny forced to by all sorts of circumstances, including a monumental guilt, we denied not only our personal aboriginality, we denied what it was that brought us here. And a lot of people would wish to escape that by decrying this as, for example, the black armband view of history. But if we are to deny all suffering, if we are to ignore all the pain, all the error, all the cruelty, then we will deny half of history, including the Anzacs. We are prepared to embrace the awful carnage at Gallipoli and we have recently been game enough, gutsy enough, to embrace a torrid, cruel history that brings us to this time and place. It is not as if it is not full of moments of great comradeship, of great love, of great affection, and of great heroism. But if we do not recognize the fundamental inhumanity and cruelty exhibited in this exhibition, the awfulness carried out in the name of God and goodness, then we will ignore the fact that it didn't happen in the last century. It happened in this century and in many parts of our society continues to happen. Let us look this thing in the face. Let us deal with it. 
thank you for this exhibition. Thank you for asking me to be a part of it. Thank you, Jack. I would now invite the Honourable Jenny Macklin, the Minister for Families, Housing, Community Services and Indigenous Affairs, to open the exhibition. Thank you very, very much, uh, Andrew. And if I could first of all say to Shane, thank you so much for your welcome to country, your very heartfelt welcome to country. We all join together, all of us here today, in acknowledging you as an elder, in acknowledging all the other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who are here today. And we also acknowledge uh, the ancestors and elders past. Thank you for your very, very, um, I, I can only say the way in which you talked to us today demonstrated uh, your true understanding of what we're here about tonight. I do want to uh, say to Jack, thank you so much uh, for the way in which you bring us all together in the way that you've just spoken to us. Thank you for your love of the museum. Give him another clap. <laughs> we know you love the museum, uh, but we also know that this comes uh, because of a very personal understanding of what so many people here today have uh, been through. And uh, for you to be here is very, very special for everybody. Uh, to Danny, Danny Gilbert, thank you, Danny, for your leadership of the museum. Uh, we know that uh, this is a national treasure and we uh, know that it is in extraordinarily safe hands. So thank you for uh, the leadership you show. I do want to acknowledge uh, all of the survivors who are here tonight, all of you who've come from so many parts of Australia this is for you and for all the people who couldn't be here with us tonight. A few of us, uh, Carolyn Carroll, Harold Haig, Ian Thwaites, Jim Luthy, Joanna P Pinglace and I went through the exhibition this morning and it was very difficult. It was very difficult. I decided not to go and have another look this afternoon because I wasn't sure I'd be able to speak to you if I did. I'm sure when you uh, go, you will see the enormous uh, dedication that those from the uh, museum have shown in putting together this very, very significant exhibition. So to all of those wonderful advocates uh, who I've just named, thank you so much for your leadership. You're very special. There are a few others uh, who, were, who haven't been able to join us tonight for different reasons. I do want to acknowledge Leonie Sheedy, Margaret Humphreys, And uh, someone I know who's very, very special to you all, uh, the former Senator Andrew Murray, who couldn't be with us tonight. <laughs> These and others, of course, are very, very special people who have done so much over such a long time to shed light on each and every one of your experiences in institutions. And of course now, tonight, we can add to these wonderful advocates the National Museum. We now have people in this museum, Mike Pickering, Jay Arthur, Adil Chenoweth and others who've put this exhibition together. They too, uh, of course, uh, have joined the ranks of wonderful advocates 
for uh, the forgotten Australians and the former child migrants. Inside, life in children's homes and institutions. It does tell the, tell the stories that have been left untold and for, for many remained untold. They are told, as you will see in a moment, with the most beautiful, beautiful accuracy, but also very, very chilling poignancy. Their telling itself is so important. Through this exhibition, these stories will, over time, continue to form part of the patchwork of our national memory, the way in which all of us understand our past, both now and into the future. It is true that what happened to these children, to all of you, must be acknowledged, it must be confronted, and of course, by all of us, must be better understood. Because what happened to these children, to you, must never happen again. Hiding these stories from ourselves has gone on for long enough, long enough. Two years tomorrow it is, as so many of you remember, the Australian government acknowledged the forgotten Australians and the former child migrants and acknowledged your experiences. And we did say sorry. And I just want to say again, we said sorry for the brutality and it was brutality, for the injustices inflicted on you as children who are placed in our collective care. We said sorry for the lack of warmth, the lack of love and affection, which you deserved just like every other child in our country. And I know this meant so much to you. We said we believe you. We believe what you have been telling us, and we believe you now. We acknowledge what happened was real, and we are very sorry that uh, what was real was forgotten. But it is true, not forgotten by you, but forgotten by too many. But you are now remembered, and of course the apology helped to open so many hearts, and I think very importantly, the hearts and ears of the nation to your stories, to your courage, to your determination. That is really what led to the apology, and that courage and determination is what has led to this exhibition. It is your exhibition, yours and is dedicated to all of you. Inside, we'll make certain that the stories of the forgotten Australians and former child migrants will be heard and will not be forgotten. Also, I'd like to acknowledge the Oral History Project, which records the stories of survivors. And this too will make sure that these, are, these stories are preserved in perpetuity and I'd like, on behalf of everyone here tonight, to thank the National Library for their dedication and work to preserve your stories. Of course, one of our jobs, in addition to uh, making sure that this exhibition uh, took place, is also to continue our support for CLAN, for the Alliance of Forgotten Australians, and the International Association of Former Child Migrants and Their Families to continue to support the very important work that you do, counselling and supporting your members and their families. And I do want to say a very, very big thank you for that work because nobody else could do it in the way that you do. So please, a big round of applause. One of the things we committed to at the Apology was uh, a national find and connect service 
so as to help uh, family tracing and support services right across Australia. And tonight I'm very pleased to be able to announce some further progress on the Find and Connect service. The, find, the National Find and Connect web resource to help care leavers search for their records has gone live today. So uh, you can get online and uh, make use of that uh, very, very important service. Of course, it will grow with time. We uh, know how important it is to continue to unearth the stories that are critical for all of you. To know your own history, to know who you are, to know where you came from, who it was that brought you into this world. And telling these stories, of course, helps all of us recognise your experience and understand that little bit better. There's a story of a small teddy bear that features in this exhibition. Jeanette Blick owned, owned this teddy, but as soon as it was given to her, it was taken away. Jeanette wasn't allowed to cuddle her teddy at night. It is so symbolic of the harshness and brutality and also the absence of love and warmth in children's lives. But posted underneath Jeanette's story on the website for this exhibition is this note. Auntie Jeanette, you and Auntie Pat give us all strength by not only surviving what you've been through, but also being brave enough to face it and bring it into the light for all to see. Say, stay strong. Strength and courage do define you. They do define you and allow your stories to be told. And we do hope that through this exhibition, more survivors find the strength to tell their stories so that we as a nation find the strength to confront this very, very dark chapter of our past and strengthen our resolve to never, ever let this happen again. Six years ago, the Care Leavers Australia Network, so well known to us as CLAN, called for this exhibition. They said, let our histories be visible. They wrote this in the, their submission to the Senate inquiry into the forgotten Australians. And I love this quote. Get the dinosaurs out of the Australian Museum and dedicate it to the orphanages and children. And that is what the National Museum has done. I'm pleased to launch this exhibition and dedicate it to those children. Thank you. This is a National Museum of Australia production. For more information, visit nma.gov.au.